everybody. We're back again to one of our artist talks. We're going to be talking with two artists that are participating in the Space Between Us exhibition at Bailey Contemporary Arts. So I'm happy to welcome today Nela Garzon and Robert Maraziti. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Good, thank you for having me here. So we are going to start, uh, we have some questions and we want to start with, can you share with us what made you submit the pieces? Like what was in the call for entries or on the phrase, a space, be a space between us that made you interested in submitting the pieces of work and why did you chose those pieces uh, for, the, for the submission? Uh, so let's start with Nella. Okay. Um... I think that the first reason for submitting was I've never shown in Florida before and that was a great opportunity for me and I think that the topic for the show uh, gave a wide range of possibilities so that attracted me to think about my work under that umbrella. So basically the pieces I chose for submitting I thought of them like um, having this search of knowledge within human beings that bring everyone together and also that search for knowledge uh, set roles for each one of us that set us apart so that's the reason why i submit what i submit and can you tell us a little bit more about the techniques that you're doing because it seems that like you do drawing you do embroidery could you share with us a little bit more because the two pieces that were selected they come from different mediums both but when i look at them i know that they're yours so you you maintain your style regardless of the medium that you use can you share it with us a little bit yeah uh I consider myself multidisciplinary and most of the time I work uh, researching traditional mediums from traditional cultures. But in this regard, the small, in, the small pieces that I do are more like freestyle pieces in which I use either embroidery, like digital embroidery, like illustration, or pens and markers, which is the other one drawing that you have for the show. Uh, when I was using the embroidery, I was thinking more of traditional um, beliefs, like the piece is called shamanism. So I wanted to put that into it, questioning how a traditional belief and the traditional embroidery is done, but in this, in this uh, particular piece is done digital. So it's how the shamanism has also become a word that it's used so easily by contemporary people that think of themselves like close to nature, where the word is actually coming from a very ancient religion, probably one of the first ones from Siberia. So it's that play between what we do in the actual world and what we take from ancestral knowledge, let's say. Yeah, I was happy to see that your pieces were selected because when I came up with the idea of the exhibition and the series of exhibitions that are based on a space, we throw it out and he said, there will be people who will submit that it has nothing to do with the actual outer space. So people are gonna explore the space between a negative space. So when I saw your, your pieces, there is the connection, but um, it's talking about a different space between us, and I really appreciate that. Um, so, Robert, how about you? Let's talk about the pieces that you submitted, the one that was selected. Uh, can you share with us a little bit more? Sure. Uh, I, was, I was pleased to, to, to be asked to submit some pieces for the show, and, uh, and I was really uh, struck by the, the nature of the, of the concept, uh, space between us, because the work that I do is about uh, humans in our natural environment. And uh, whether it be exploration over the seas or, or searching for a home uh, after one's been displaced, uh, space travel, space exploration is an extension of that most human of all experiences. Uh, the need to, to, to go beyond, to find some place more suitable, to take the place we have and make it more habitable. So I was excited to, uh, to submit some paintings and pleased to have them accepted. And 
what I found really interesting and powerful even nowadays is that we are we're throwing or coming out of a lockdown. We have this virus. And I look at the piece that was selected. I mean, I, I believe the title is Searching. Is this man inside the water? And I look at the news and they're just opening the beaches here in Florida. And, and we were talking um, earlier off camera, the relationship of Florida and the water. Um, so can you can you can you share with our viewers uh, what we were talking earlier off camera about um, you know how Florida is at the or Florida artists are kind of like at the forefront of really discussing and calling attention to climate change? Yes, certainly. Uh, I was moved by this image when I found it uh, in investigations into sea level rise and how it's affecting the entire planet. Certainly here in Florida, we're, we're very conscious of it with king tides and, and even just navigating certain parts of Miami or Miami Beach is problematic based upon time of day or, 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 uh, or period during that month. So the image is based upon a, a photograph of uh, the president of an island in the South Pacific called uh, Kiribati. And this island is threatened by global warming and sea level rise to the, ex to the extent that they're needing to leave their island to go someplace else. This is the former president of the island uh, who does TED Talks and was nominated for a uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, swimming in the ocean up to his neck. And I thought it was a great metaphor for our human condition, uh, how much at risk we are. And either we're looking for a home we've lost or seeking a new place to habitat. So there is a faint outline of a home in the painting to suggest the yearning, the searching uh, into a new place, a new space to habitat. Wow, it's incredibly poignant. Um, so thank you. I'm really excited that this piece uh, was selected by our juror, Andrea Huffman. Um, so let's talk about how or if this enclosure has changed your creative practices, the way that you create work. I mean, some people have house, house or home studios, some people have studios outside. So Nella, can you share with us, uh, has, there any been, has there any change on how you create work? Uh, well, I believe I was sort of lucky that I already had a home studio because I'm a mother and my daughter is still like kindergartner. So I've had to play already with timing and space to, to share my mother timing with an artist timing. It just have become reduced for me because before I would use, of course, her school time to work in studio. I'm also a teacher and uh, the fact of teaching long distance from home has been the most the thing that ha has affected me most or had i'm glad we are on summer vacation now but the time for teaching is much much longer and it takes much more work to do it long distance from home than actually going to a school and doing it but uh, i just feel lucky because i know some some people have had uh, studios far away, they cannot access material. So I really feel fine of what I've had to do with it. And how about you, Robert? How's your practice changed at all during this lockdown? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's funny, I, I, have a, I have a day gig where I work as an art director for, uh, ironically, a cruise line in, in Miami. So uh, we've, been, we've been impacted on that. So we're all working from home where my home studio is. And normally I would do my painting in the morning before I went to work or in the evenings uh, after I did my workouts. Uh, but now I get to do it uh, more often and I'm, I'm near my studio on a regular basis. So I've been able to be very productive. I've uh, been 11 weeks on the hunker down and I've been able to do 11 paintings in that period of time and, uh, and continue my investigation of uh, nature and, and and man's engagement with and reaction to and uh, and and dealing with the consequences of our mismanagement or or benign management of, of nature. So it's it's been good. I've enjoyed the opportunity to be that intensive on it, though I do decry our challenges and, and hope and pray that everyone's safe and remains in, in, in good places and doing the right things. And so um, 
can you share more of how your process during these 11 weeks uh, have been since you're being so productive? What does your process entail? Well, uh, because I have a, uh, I have a background in, in graphic arts, uh, I'm very facile and comfortable using Photoshop. So I do a lot of digital investigation and will sometimes montage or combined images to do my initial studies in a digital realm. Uh, then I will, uh, I will uh, apply that uh, in an analog basis, just paint on canvas. But I will go back and I will check where I was and, and it helps me to, to move forward, much like uh, uh, Vermeer used a, a camera obscura. I use Photoshop. It's a great tool. It helps me, it helps me to find my place uh, without, without changing my intent or, or my hand. So I like to counterpoint uh, the detail of the resolution of faces or certain objects with the looseness and gesture of the hand. So it's, uh, it's, it allows me to be productive because it allows me to move directly to my intention. So that's very impressive. Um, can you share with us how your work is looking into the future? Will this body of work um, become something else? Or can you, can you tell us what, how the future looks to you? Well, it's, it's in general terms, it's the duality of nature and, and, and man's and humankind's impact on it and how we deal with it. So it's a very broad uh, concept. And I have applied it in different ways. Some sea level rise. Uh, recently, I did a painting which is about a, a mangrove cuckoo in a mangrove tree, a very tight detail shot of the bird. Below it is, a, is a, uh, an engraved uh, shamanistic object from a Native American people who would then ingest a psychoactive drug to have their path. And on that is engraved this, the figure of a falcon warrior. So here we have Native people looking to embrace the bird spirit. So it's humankind seeking to be natural-like and counterpointed with the bird in nature being itself. So it's that duality, that, that push-pull between humankind and, uh, and our natural environment and the balance that we always wrestle with as we look to, to act upon it, be acted upon by it, and to, and to emulate it. I look forward to seeing your pieces. And so, Nella, how about you? What, wh how does the future look like? And I mean, I've been following, I have to say that Nella and I were friends from my time in Houston. So I am one of her followers on Instagram and I know that she's been really busy <laughs> working on different projects. So um, can, you, can you share with us um, what you've been working on and how do they carry on in the future? Um, well, I think that I've always have backed up projects because of the lack of timing I have to actually produce. Um, I'm working currently in a project that's taking almost two years now, that's called Made in China, and it's about the consumerism, uh, maybe taking and tearing apart the cultural tradition. So I, part of the project has a series of molas that it's traditional hand um, hand embroidered embroidered and reverse appliques illustrations done by the guna woman of Colombia and Panama and I took them as my own to do highly consumer products uh, that are usually manufactured in China uh, to to show how something done as is low by traditional cultures, it's sometimes um, bargained and sold for nothing versus these consumer products that are sold and disposed every day by all of us uh, are sort of destroying the, the cultures that we should be protecting. And part of the project has also this set of paintings that I started during um, this isolation uh, that are based on what's going on right now in Northwest China with the Uyghurs and the Kazakhs, which are the ethnic minorities that are Muslim, that are living there, that the government is uh, putting them confined in something that they call vocational or re-education camps. Mm -hmm. And they forbid them to practice their religion. They forbid them to 
to have long beards as is their traditions. And uh, they are also supposedly to make improvements in their way of living. Uh, they are taught how to confectionate and do manufactured goods that eventually are gonna be sold to everyone around the world. And that's at, at the expense of forcing them to lose their culture. So all of these uh, uh, series are part of the same project made in China. And also it involves a series of uh, small sculptors I'm doing out of disposed products like toys and appliances that I found in uh, secondhand stores and I am making these clay sculptures out of them that uh, mimic sort of these idols that were pre-Hispanic uh, pre from pre-Columbian cultures. And as for questioning the viewer, uh, what we idolize and what we set up as what we adore, like everyone has this relationship with products that is sort of love, purchase, and then this Suppose, you know, it's just this uh, uh, small time in between buying, uh, having this possession and then throwing it away, whereas the ancestral cultures uh, are remaining and struggling to remain and we should think about it. So that's what I've been working. I don't know if the COVID-19 will change eventually what I do. I don't think so. I think I, I have so long of works going on that maybe in two years I see like, okay, something new is happening. We'll see then what, what happens, you know, what's the outcome of what we're living today and if it will affect, uh, eventually get involved in what I'm doing. I don't know for now. What is interesting with, with your work, when I look at it, there's so much humor into it, but is humor with a is, is charged with the critic and that's what makes it fun i mean you look at i look at your piece and it's like i shouldn't be finding humor in it but is that what's the word like it's very poignant and you really make the case so i i really appreciate uh, what you do and i mean this talk has been incredibly in depth we talk about uh, commercialism we talk about climate change uh, but I think that we have to bid farewell at this time. I want to thank you, Robert and Nella, for spending the time with me, sharing more about your work. I think we just touched the tip of the iceberg. Um, your pieces are going to be in Bailey Contemporary Arts in the exhibition uh, The Space Between Us from July through October. And this concludes our artist talk for today. See you next time. Bye.